It's Red Eye Radio. Talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show. From the Uniden America Studios, for Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, Dan Mandis, this is Red Eye Radio. Appreciate you listening. The phone number remains the same, 866-90-RED-EYE, 866-907-3339. Eric and Gary, they return next Sunday night, Monday morning. Always appreciate the opportunity. Do me a favor and follow me on the socials, particularly X and to Dan Mandis Show. I'll try and follow you back as well. Most of the uh, stories that I cover tonight and every night and every morning as morning host at Super Talk 99.7 WTN is posted there on X. My favorite story of the morning is Peter Ducey. I'm sure that you've heard this audio before, that this was just ricocheting across the Internet. When Peter Ducey from Fox News asked Cringe Jean-Pierre, I call her Cringe for short, he asks a question about Kamala Harris and her accents. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. And you all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. Yeah, I mean, we we spent a good uh, part of the night last night talking about the very cringeworthy accents of Kamala Harris out on the campaign trail. And so Peter Ducey asked Corinne Jean-Pierre, okay, can we just, can we talk about what everybody in America is talking about, the cringeworthy accents, please? Since when does the vice president have what sounds like a southern accent? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I mean, this is... <laughs> she was talking about unions in Detroit using uh, one tone of voice. Is this something that same you Same think... line... Okay, Peter. That this... she, uh, she used the same line in Pittsburgh, and it sounded like she at least had some kind of a southern I think, drawl. I mean, what? do you hear the question that you're... I mean, do you think Americans seriously think that this is an important question? They care... You know what they care about? They care about the economy. They care about lowering costs. Hmm. They care about health care. Right. That's what Americans care about. So, That's what they okay, want to well, hear. This is something... They care about, your colleague just asked me about, democ- what basically we talked about, went back and forth about democracy and freedom. That's that, what they care about. I'm not even going to entertain some question about Love it. the president. It's just, it, it's just, hearing it sounds so ridiculous. Well, but hearing it is... The question, it, I'm talking about the questions, is, is just insane. Is that how she talks in meetings here? I, I'm just... It, come, Peter, we're we're moving on. We're still moving on. I, I, I love how she's just, oh, the righteous indignation of cringe Jean-Pierre. Now, here's the thing. This story does matter for a number of different reasons. Number one is because it's about honesty and character, is it not? Isn't it about honesty? Isn't it about character? Isn't it about pandering as well? I mean, America wants to know. Who is the real Kamala Harris? We have an election coming up in November. And Kamala Harris's voice, it it changes as often as her policy positions. And so you have her with these very cringeworthy moments out on the campaign trail, speaking in front of unions. And people are asking, "What, what kind of accent is that? Is that a southern accent? Is that a black Southern accent? What is that? Now, I I love that she took the cringe. Jean-Pierre took the road of righteous indignation, right? Even though this is something that a lot of people are talking about, a lot of people are asking about as well. Millions of people, including one guy named Terrence K. Williams. Now, this guy is on the socials. He's got millions of followers. He is black and he was horrified. Let's just get through the next 64 days. <laughs> Kamala, you're going to stop mocking Southern black women. You're going to stop that right right now. Mm. You are an Indian woman from California. <laughs> you don't talk like that. We got 64 days, y'all. <laughs> you're going to stop mocking Southern black women. Yeah, I happen to have a whole lot of them in my family, and you're going to stop playing with them, Kamala. You're going to stop it right now. Now, I'm in the South. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. And according to Terrence K. Williams, Kamala Harris was mocking Southern black women. Now, I I don't know if that's true. I don't know what Kamala Harris's intentions are. But I can tell you this. 
She sounds absolutely ridiculous. But that is one of the things that, that I said yesterday. What would happen if Donald Trump came out and started speaking with some sort of an accent? Now, Terrence, again, says that she is using a black Southern accent. OK, let's just go with that. Can you imagine if Donald Trump came out and started speaking like Kamala Harris did at a rally? I mean, it would not only be cringeworthy, but also wrong. And this is as well. And so whether it's Terrence K. Williams or Southern black women in the South or wherever. People should be horrified. Number one, because people are saying that it's actually racist in nature. Terrence K. Williams, I believe uh, he is one of them. But apparently she is going to get a pass from the media. Now, obviously, she identifies whether, I guess, depending on the day, either she's South Asian or black, whatever. For the record, she is identified as both at different times. She told The Washington Post many, many years ago she identifies as an American. To me, her policies are bad enough that we don't have to delve into that. Donald Trump wants to go down that road. Others want to go down that road. They can knock themselves out. But to me... The really easy conversation isn't about that. It's about her policy. But when it comes to these accents, women and men and Americans should be horrified. Nancy Mace, of course, South Carolina Congresswoman, had this to say. She was on with Benny Johnson. Well, it's it's actually kind of racist if you think about it. I mean, like, that's the thing. I think the, the biggest racism, the biggest sexism is actually with the radical left. And it's dangerous because it's so subcutaneous. It's so under the surface, mm-hmm. right? And it's an act. She's from California. She, like, grew up in Canada. She's from California. They don't talk like that. You know, in, in my district, there are people that have lots of different accents, Southern included, depending on what town you're from. That's all perfectly normal, but not in her line of work, not in her job, not where she grew up. I mean, I say y'all, that's about as Southern as I get. I've lived all over the country. There's no, you just, it's just bizarre. And I think it's racist. Honestly, it's just the strangest thing. All right. So that's Nancy Mace uh, checking in and saying that what Kamala Harris is doing is racist. I, I will tell you that it is about honesty and integrity. She's lying about who she is, and she keeps doing it. And nobody in her inner circle is telling her, hey, you know what? You might want to back off on the fake accent because you're angering a a lot of people. Now, the crazy thing is, and I I say this almost once a show, at least, whether it's here on Red Eye Radio or as morning host on WTN in Nashville, Tennessee. Democrats don't seem to care about the honesty and the integrity of their candidate. And here's the thing. To be perfectly honest, I don't know if anybody really does care about that anymore. I just I'm just telling you the way that I see it. I don't think that people necessarily care about that anymore. But what people do care about is, quite frankly, policy. And so when cringe Jean-Pierre says, oh, let's talk about policy. okay, well, you know what? There's a lot of things that we can talk about as it relates to policy. You know what they care about? They care about the economy. All right, let's talk about the economy. Grocery prices are still way up under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. You want to look at inflation side by side. Of course, we also talked about that last night. You look at inflation side by side, issue by issue. Donald Trump wins hands down. So, cringe Jean-Pierre, you want to talk about the economy? We can talk about the economy all day long. They care about lowering costs. All right, let's talk about lowering costs. What exactly has Joe Biden done to lower costs of, I mean, literally everything? Nothing. We heard over and over again from cringe Jean-Pierre, the president is laser focused on the economy. Joe Biden, he wakes up every morning and he goes to bed every night. His mind is on the economy and the the nation as a whole said, "Okay, that's great. But we're not seeing results. Inflation is still over nine percent. Now we've got interest rates. 
also going up. And now I do understand, obviously, the inflation rate has gone way down now. But for a long time, it was way up past 9%. Now we're dealing with all the credit card debt. And so for Crin Jean Pierre, she's talking about, let's talk about what the American people really care about. They don't care about Kamala Harris using a fake accent. Okay, well, let's talk about other things. They care about health care. Let's talk about health care. Because we know what Kamala Harris wants to do with health care. Kamala Harris has said that she wants to, number one, give health care to illegal aliens. And number two, she doesn't believe that you should have your own health care. That's what Americans care about. That's what uh, Cringe John Pierre says. Those are the things that the American people care about. OK, well, I just mentioned the things that Kamala Harris has said regarding health care. Let's listen very closely. So for people out there who like their insurance, well, they don't get to keep it. Let's eliminate all of that. Let's move on. I am never going to be in favor of a policy that denies people access to public health, public safety, or public education based on their immigrant status. So there you go. That's what Kamala Harris wants to do. So I guess the question is, what would the American people like to talk about? Because, see, all of these things, to me, they're interwoven. All of these things, they're they're part of the same problem that Kamala Harris has. That's the problem of honesty. Because as I said a while ago, as I said at the beginning of the monologue, Kamala Harris seems to be changing her voice as much as she changes her policy positions. To the point now where we actually have no idea where she stands on literally anything. And I think the American people are now beginning to figure it out now. I told you, and I've I've told you this for quite some time now, I'm not a big follower of polls. But some polling came out today, last couple of days, Nate Silver from 538. And part of this narrative is that the the Harris bump that was supposed to come after the DNC really didn't. And if it was, it was so quick. And now all of that momentum that she supposedly had has slowed down. It has slowed down to a crawl. And here's the reason why. The reason why is, of course, she had that big, I'm going to air quote this, that big interview with Dana Bash, which, I mean, that really wasn't much of an interview. She needed Tim Waltz to be by her side. She didn't really have anything substantive to speak of to offer the American people. She gave the speech a couple of weeks ago now, and that speech also fell flat. So everything she tries to do seems to fall flat. Nate Silver has Donald Trump nationally 56.7%. Kamala Harris 43%. A month ago, by the way, it was all Kamala Harris. And so coming out of the DNC, theoretically, supposedly, and I said this at the time. I said, coming out of the DNC, more than likely Kamala Harris, she will be the highest she'll get as far as the polling goes. Now, I do realize, number one, polling changes. Number two, I know that polling differs from one company to another. And number three, I also understand that polls are a snapshot. And between now and November 5th, friends, that is a political lifetime. But what about those all important battleground states? Trump is winning. It's close. But Trump is winning winning in Pennsylvania, Nevada, Arizona, North Carolina and Georgia. Harris is winning in Wisconsin and Michigan. You know, it's interesting. So, yeah, it looks like Donald Trump, at least according to Nate Silver, who, by the way, has been wrong before. But you've got um, Trump winning in North Carolina and Georgia. So apparently what that tells you is that, you know, she can speak in this, you know, really awkward, cringeworthy, a cringeworthy Southern accent, uh, perhaps a black Southern accent. And they're not buying it because you've got Trump winning in North Carolina and also Georgia in those very important battleground states. But here's the deal. And I'm I'm just going to be honest with you. The polling out there, it is all contradictory. 
I can present to you what Nate Silver from 538 has. I can present to you other pollsters that will have completely different narratives and completely different stories. Which is why I don't really, to be perfectly candid, I don't much care about the polls. The only poll that matters is ultimately what happens on November 5th and, of course, in early voting across the country. But I think the American people are trying to figure out who is Kamala Harris? Why does she keep speaking so cringeworthy? And what the hell does this woman stand for? Because nobody really understands at this point. And when she actually comes out with policy initiatives, there's another one that that she came out with here in the last couple of days, which is also borrowed from the Donald Trump playbook. So the question is, will the real Kamala Harris please stand up? 866-90-RED-EYES, the phone number 866-907-3339. Dan Mandis here, in for Gary and Erica, this is Red Eye Radio. This report is brought to you by Shell Rotella, with advanced synthetic technology is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Did you know that up to half of all major engine failures are due to poor cooling system maintenance? That's a lot of downtime and can cost drivers big. You expect a lot from your engine, which is why the cooling system must be a part of your maintenance routine. Here's a tip to keep your cooling system in shape and your engine running smooth. Inspect your radiator, belts, and hoses for potential failures and deterioration, especially ahead of winter. Check the condition of your coolant to ensure it's at the optimum freeze point. Inadequate freeze protection levels can result in cracking of lines or passages. If you find insufficient freeze point levels or any wear and tear, have these issues repaired by technicians you can trust. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. Red Eye Radio, 866-90. Red Eye is the phone number, 866-907-3339. Dan Mandis in for Gary and Eric. And this is Scott in Kansas on Red Eye Radio. Hey, Scott, how are you? Good morning. Um, I really feel like the general election is more like a junior high popularity contest being mediated or run by the left-wing media and the left-wing elite Hollywood people. And I'm just, uh, I, I think we honestly get exactly what we deserve. We have an uneducated electorate. They don't want to educate themselves about anything, but maybe one issue. And they think that the ultimate is to call themselves an independent where they have no political philosophy. It's, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to get what we deserve, honestly. Well, let me ask you, uh, Scott, I, let, let me ask you, Scott, I'm interested in, in your opinion on this. So when you talk about how we have an uninformed electorate uh, electorate, do you think it's worse on the left or the right? I believe that um, it's. I think there are probably more people who are right-leaning than know that they are, and it's absolutely worse on the left. I mean, there's no question about that. Well, I and I think Um, think, there be. I think part of that, Scott. I got to run. I appreciate the call. I think I think part of that on the left because I agree with you. You know, I and be perfectly candid. Says the conservative guy, but I but I do believe that on the left there is far more ignorance and. I will also say there's far more disinformation than ever before coming from the left. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more uh, straight ahead. By the way, speaking of disinformation, did you see who's coming back to CNN? Oh, my Lord. Details straight ahead. I'm Red Eye Radio.
from the Uniden America Studios. Now, for Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, here is Dan Mandis. Yeah, uh, Mr. Potato Head is back. It's Red Eye Radio, and uh, it's 866-90-RED-EYE, 866-907-3339. You can follow me on the socials, uh, particularly X at Dan Mandis Show. Brian Stelter is back. Now, I typically don't call him Mr. Potato Head. Other people do. I am myself, I'm kind of sort of a Mr. Potato Head in the fact that I have no hair on my head. Brian Stelter, though, has been hired back by CNN. Now, here's the thing. This is a guy I have never understood how Brian Stelter, as host of Reliable Sources on CNN, how did he get that gig? Because remember what his whole thing was. Brian Stelter's whole thing, before they crap canned him because of low ratings, I never really understood what gave him the authority to be the media watchdog. I never understood that. So now CNN has, has hired back Brian Stelter. This is now number one. I, I'm kind of surprised that this is big news. Because this is a guy who, at least to me, personified misinformation. He was like Mr. Misinformation. As the host of the ironically called Reliable Sources. (laughs) And now he's coming back. From Fox News, ousted CNN host Brian Stelter. Announcing he is returning to the network after the leadership that handed him a pink slip in 2022 has now been shown the door. So now they've brought him back. So is CNN now just officially given up on being a legit news organization? See, that would be my question. Because remember, one of the reasons why Stelter and others were shown the door was because CNN decided that they wanted to become more legit as a news organization and be less opinionated. So they fired uh, Cuomo, Chris Cuomo. They fired Don Lemon because Lemon was a nightmare to deal with. So I wonder if they'll I wonder if they'll be bringing Cuomo back. I don't know about Don Lemon. But I just find this whole thing interesting. He says, I'm thrilled to share that I am returning as the lead author of CNN's Reliable Sources newsletter. The digest I founded in 2015 Stelter wrote in a surprise message to Reliable Sources readers on Tuesday, I'm returning to CNN in a brand new role as chief media analyst, which means I'll be appearing on air, developing digital content and helming this newsletter. So I guess he doesn't have an actual show. Stelter said his return to CNN, which officially begins on September 9th, will not be the same as his previous stint at the network, insisting because I am different. He says the media industry has matured, CNN has evolved, and I have changed a lot since I signed off two years ago, Stelter wrote. After 20-plus years as a news junkie, I changed my habits and tuned out for a bit. I also changed my vantage point, moving from Manhattan to a horse farm, Near one of Donald Trump's golf clubs, I experienced the news more like an everyday consumer. And in doing so, I learned a whole lot about the attention economy and the information ecosystem. I'm looking forward to sharing what I learned with you. So Brian Stelter returning. He says the reliable sources itself, the uh, TV show will not be revived. Now, this was his last day on CNN. I, I pulled up some, some of my old audio that I have of Brian Stelter. And I, if you ask Brian Stelter, perhaps this audio no longer represents what he believes. But this was part of his last day on CNN. This entire hour, it's a special hour, and it's about change. It's about change all across the media world. What's changing? What might change? And what must never change about the accountability function of journalism. You know, I love this show, this small but mighty show punched above its weight 
for so many years. It actually diff- didn't. I mean, his, his ratings, they were not very good. I mean, dare I say it, but I believe that I can say this overnight. His ratings sucked. They were not very good. You know, the thing about TV is that it's ephemeral, right? It's fleeting. It evaporates up into the air, and a lot of it is not even meant to be, a lot of it's not even meant to be remembered. All right, so that was as he was uh, signing off. And and we also, I remember what he was all about, and that was, of course, fake news. They are effective, but let's recognize how poisonous they are as well. Every single president disputes some news coverage of their presidency, but no. This is Seltzer calling about uh, talking about Donald Trump. No president until now gets up at a rally and calls news outlets fake. No Mm -hmm. president gets up at a a podium and says the things we've heard from this president tonight. It is insidious. It is poisonous. And I think for the journalists Mm -hmm. in this room, just trying to do their best work, uh, it is disappointing to continue to hear the president taking this tone. You know, what's interesting about that comment is that his show, Reliable Sources, put that in air quotes, by the way, His show didn't really age well. I mean, you look at all of the stories that he either pushed or ignored. But you could say this for the entire media landscape. Fox News, just as a tick list, they've got all kinds of stories that Brian Stelter ignored. But one of the big stories that he pushed for years, reliable sources and Brian Stelter pushed the notion of Russian collusion. Remember that whole thing? I mean, it was a daily onslaught of Russian collusion over and over again, and it turned out, of course, we all know what the Mueller report found, that there was no Russian collusion. But Fox News, all of these stories, Judge bans MSNBC from the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, the entire nation was intensely monitoring the trial of teenager Kyle Rittenhouse, who was charged with murdering two people amid the Kenosha riots following the 2020 police-involved shooting of Jacob Blake. But the day before Rittenhouse was acquitted on all counts, the judge made headlines by barring NBC from the courthouse after police caught a freelance NBC news producer following the jury bus When he ran a red light, Stelter swept the controversy, plaguing CNN's closest liberal competitor under the rug. And I will say the reason that they did that was because all these progressives, they have to stick together. You know what else he ignored? Trump era media narratives that fell apart again from Fox News. The media pundit avoided the Washington Post's major correction to its bombshell January report about a phone call between then-President Donald Trump and a Georgia elections investigator urging her to, quote, find the fraud and that she would be a national hero if she did. Now, that whole story turned out not to be true. Stelter ignored it. Reliable sources Not so reliable. They say the CNN star, air quotes, star, had nothing to say about the collapse narrative alleging Trump ordering Lafayette Square Park to be cleared of protesters so he could pose in front of the riot torch St. John's Church a couple of years ago. An inspector general investigation concluded U.S. Park uh, Police and the U.S. Secret Service deemed it necessary to remove protesters from the park in order to install anti-scale fencing. What else did he ignore? What was I just talking about? The Washington Post issues stunning corrections on articles involving, involving the Steele dossier. Brian Stelter didn't cover that either. Why? Because he would be forced to admit that he himself was wrong. Don Lemon's text messages emerge during the Juicy Smollier, the Jesse Smollett trial. Former Empire star Jesse Smollett shocked the nation in 2019 when he claimed that he was the victim of a vicious hate crime in Chicago, which the national media hyped while offering little to no skepticism. It wasn't long before Chicago Police Department suspected Jesse Smollett had orchestrated a hoax. 
But you know what? Forget about the fact that you had Don Lemon texting Jesse Smollett during this whole thing. But Stelter didn't mention any of it. Smollett testified that he received a text message from Don Lemon, supposedly relaying information that the Chicago Police Department did not believe the actor's account of what happened. While Lemon himself failed to acknowledge his own involvement in the Jesse Smollett trial while covering it on his program, neither did Brian Stelter. The turmoil of the Lincoln Project, again, As we're hearing now that Brian Stelter is returning to CNN and a reliable sources newsletter, he's also going to be some sort of an an analyst analyst. We're going through some of these stories that uh, he completely ignored during his time at CNN. Stelter managed to go the entire year without once mentioning any of the controversies that plagued the Lincoln Project. Now, you may recall the Lincoln Project, the anti-Trump PAC that was supposedly conservative, became a media darling during the 2020 election cycle when you needed, because I've been doing this a long time, when you conveniently needed a Republican air quotes, a Republican to bash Donald Trump. All he had to do was call the folks at the Lincoln Project and they would be right there. But as it turns out, they had all kinds of skeletons in their closet. When news broke that co-founder John Weaver was accused of sexually harassing over 20 young men online, one was 14 years old when Weaver first contacted him with inappropriate messages, and Brian Stelter, according to Fox News, was silent. I mean, I could go on and on. The whole point of this is, is that Brian Stelter returning to CNN is a return to CNN fake news. And when Donald Trump says CNN is fake news, I mean, I, I personally, I think that they have made some progress, but I mean, they're nowhere near the CNN of the 19, what, 80s when they truly were actually all news. And if you wanted to get the news, you could find it on CNN and there wasn't all of this politicization like there is now. One more audio bite from Brian Stelter. Here's what I do know. I know it's not partisan to stand up for decency and democracy and dialogue. It's not partisan to stand up to demagogues. It's required. It's patriotic. We must make sure we don't give platforms to those who are lying to our faces. But we also must make sure we are representing the full spectrum of debate and representing what's going on in this country and in this world. You know, it is interesting because you can tell that on Brian Stelter's last day where he is going back to CNN, And he said we should not be giving platforms to people who have been lying to our faces. What do you call Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? I mean, that would be an honest question. That would be my question. CNN and a whole bunch of other media outlets, they literally lied to our faces regarding any number of issues. I mean, I could go down, you know, the road of um, the border is secure. Of course, that was a lie that that CNN continued to cover, not not pressing the fact that clearly the border was not secure. But you had Kamala Harris and Alejandro Mayorkas and Joe Biden and others within the administration swearing up and down, gaslighting America that the border was closed when in reality it was wide open. We could also talk about the laptop from hell. Which, of course, we all know that that was credible, but CNN and many others discredited that claim. And they said, bottom line is, this is something that should be ignored. And that entire election of 2020 uh, turned on that story. You folks know that as well as I do. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number. 866-90-RED-EYE. Dan Madison for Gary and Eric. This is Red Eye Radio. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio.
866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number. 866-907-3339. Dan Mandis in for Gary and Eric. Follow me on the socials, if you would, at Dan Mandis Show. I will follow you back, especially on X. Uh, coming up, the controversy or non controversy depending on your point of view, as Donald Trump goes to Arlington National Cemetery, there has been a development in the case. Details straight ahead. My name is Dan Mandis. This is Red Eye Radio. Top of the Hour News is brought to you by House Products. Visit HouseProducts.com. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show. From the Uniden America Studios, for Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, Dan Mandis, this is Red Eye Radio. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number, 866-907-3339. Dan Mandis here in for Gary and Eric. Follow me on X, if you would, at Dan Mandis Show. You can also find me on Facebook as well. Lots to uh, talk about this morning, including... You know, th- this this non of Donald Trump going to the cemetery in uh, the Arlington National Cemetery, it-, it is stunning to me that this is still going on. But the media, I-, I think part of what's happening is the media is running out of things to criticize the former president for. And, and so they're just they're hanging on to this story for dear life. If you don't know the story, well, I, I went through it all in great detail yesterday and and Gary and Eric, I'm sure, talked about it last week, where Donald Trump, invited by the families of uh, the Gold Star families of those uh, members of the military that were killed during the ill-fated pullout of Afghanistan, the 13 uh, members of our military that were killed, those Gold Star families, some of them asking Donald Trump to meet with them at Arlington National Cemetery to celebrate the lives of those lost on that horrific day and Trump obliged. Now, the the left is going bat crap crazy because they're literally saying that Donald Trump broke the law because you're not supposed to do anything political at Arlington National Cemetery. They say it is and it is. It's supposed to be hallowed ground. Arlington National Cemetery, arguably the most sacred place in our country, was being used as a backdrop for a a political purpose. You are not allowed to use Arlington for political purposes. There were human beings buried there. You're not supposed to use them as props. He did so anyway. The Trump campaign was trying to use his visit for political gain. But we want to honor our veterans, not exploit them. We want to honor our veterans, not exploit them. He's now committed a new set of crimes. I mean, what he did in Arlington Cemetery was criminal behavior. I mean, unbelievable that that's what the media is going for now. And and they're sticking to it, Uh, by the way, a lot of debate over whether or not the former president actually committed a crime. But here's the thing. The families. Invited Kamala Harris and Joe Biden as well. We spoke about this last night. Certainly, if you follow news, uh, you know that the Harris campaign and also Joe Biden and his administration, they completely ignored the Gold Star families, and they have a message for Kamala Harris because she came out and she criticized Donald Trump. And thereby, if you want to extend that out, Kamala Harris also criticizing the families for inviting Donald Trump to Arlington National Cemetery. Kamala, your statement is nothing more than a political spin to help you look better. Vice President Harris why will you not express your condolences yourself? Why have we never heard from you? You have disparaged all 13 who have lost their lives as well as their families, exhibiting your lack of gratitude by your silence. President Trump has been there for us. He's been a rock for us. Mm-hmm. These are the only memories we get to make with our son, and it is you who is playing politics and trying to detract 
from our memories made that day. So so here's the deal. The longer that the media continues to do this, the longer Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are going to look, in my opinion, really bad. By the way, you just heard the media hyperventilating, hand-wringing over the fact that they believe that, that Donald Trump politicized the Arlington National Cemetery because you're not supposed to, according to the media, you're not supposed to do anything political there. Did you know that President Biden actually did a speech last uh, Memorial Day? He had a somber speech at Arlington National Cemetery after he had announced that he is running for reelection. He was running for reelection at the time. So isn't that the, the president of the United States politicizing Arlington National Cemetery, one wants to know. And also, don't forget John McCain. Way back when, he actually did a political ad as he is walking through Arlington National Cemetery. This is what it sounded like. Never forgetting those heroes with whom he served. He returned home, spirit unbroken, again devoting himself to his country. And as he's as the words are are being spoken, the screen shows him, the video shows him walking through the cemetery. Kane is ready to lead America into the new century. His mission to fundamentally reform government. I mean, you can see it on my my uh, Twitter feed, my my X uh, feed at Dan Manda Show. I swear to you that from my first day in office to the last breath I draw, I will do everything in my power to make you proud of your government. Wow. John McCain. Okay. For president. I'd forgotten how um, e- even way back then I scoffed at the whole you're going to be proud of your government thing. I just I never bought that. And that actually to be kind of perfectly candid, no disrespect to John McCain. That statement doesn't necessarily age well, especially knowing uh, what happened, what has happened with our government over the last uh, three and a half years. But what I posted on X was when this commercial came out, because remember, the uh, the left loved John McCain because he was, as I would say, an acceptable Republican because they felt no doubt like he was um, a little bit more in the middle. And certainly they loved him because he was always a thorn in the side of uh, Donald Trump. But, you know, here's the thing. Is that when that commercial came out, as John McCain is strolling through this cemetery I don't seem to recall it eliciting that kind of a reaction that we've seen with Donald Trump. And so I guess my my question would be, and again, you can see all of this on the um, Dan Mandy Show Twitter feed uh, on X. And so the, the question is, with the media, they always have such really, really strong reactions to anything Donald Trump does. You know, for somebody else, ah, whatever, it's not a big deal. But boy, if Donald Trump does it, they just explode and they'll continue to hit on on it, continue to hit on it, continue to hit on it. And the thing is, there's a lot of people that are upset over this. There's a lot of people that don't care. But I think the sheer hypocrisy has got to be understood. And when you look at the fact that they are completely ignoring To me, that's the bigger story that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden ignored the Gold Star families. That's a very big deal to quote cringe Jean-Pierre. That matters. And it does. And so the longer that the media keeps this up, because, again, realize they're running out of things to complain about with Donald Trump. They're running out of things to uh, criticize Donald Trump over. You know why? Because by and large, he has been really disciplined here in the last couple of weeks regarding his messaging. And so they have to dredge this stuff up over and over and over again. And so realize that the media, they're going to continue to hit this. And the more that they continue to hit this, the more it brings into light and the more it focuses on, number one, the the deaths of these 13 service members because of the failed pullout in Afghanistan. That's number one. And number two, the fact that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden completely have disrespected these Gold Star families by not even reaching out to them. It's incredibly sad. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number. 
Uh, Justin is calling from Indiana on Red Eye Radio. Justin, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. What part of Indiana are you calling from? Uh, Northwest Indiana, so I'm not too far from uh, Chicago, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, I The thing that's been infuriating me is we, we put too much stock in the personality of a president. You know, you got the loony left, blue no matter who, that what's, they're, they're going to vote for whoever they vote for. But you got kind of the moderates, the people that vote both parties. You know, you hear them say, um, well, I'm voting for Kamala because of decency or love or positivity. Joy it's is, like, is the word you're looking for, yeah. Justin. Joy. Remember yeah. Oprah? Joy. joy. And it's like uh, with Trump, we had world peace. We were kicking butt on the economic stage. And it's like, I don't understand how these people just put everything into, oh, his, he's not decent, though. And it's like, okay, if you had a broker and one broker, you know, was crabby or a little crass, but he got you a 12% return. And then the other broker, oh, he was super nice or at least pretend to be nice. He gave you a 2% return. Are we really that stupid to go with the 2% return? About about half you know of I mean? well, like, you you know what? Although you're absolutely right, Justin. And what I will say to you is, when it comes to Donald Trump, the left simply does not care. I mean, they just they don't care. All all common yeah. sense goes out the window, and it doesn't. You know, to me, obviously, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, to you, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But to roughly half of the American people, it makes all the sense in the world. And also, you know, it's interesting, too, Justin, I'll, I'll leave you with this, is that a lot of the things that they have been angry about and they've been horrified about regarding Donald Trump, a lot of this stuff has been completely blown way out of proportion. I'm not going to say that Donald Trump hasn't done things occasionally that makes me facepalm. But you can't argue right. with the results. Absolutely. And absolutely. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much, Justin. 866-90-RED-EYE. That is where we find Jim calling from Illinois on Red Eye. Hey, Jim, how are you? Hey, Dan, doing great. You're doing an excellent job filling in for the boys. Uh, you. Hey, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm uh, 63 years old. You know, I, I uh, was in uh, the University of Illinois back in uh, 79, going, you know, as, as freshman. And uh, I, you know, I thought I had to volunteer for some environmental groups. And, you know, I ended up with a bunch of leftists, you know. Uh, back then, I was naive. You know, I, I voted for Carter, you know, the first time. And yeah. then uh, I got an awakening with uh, Reagan. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Reagan uh, turned my life around. And uh, but these guys were uh their their mantra is uh lies and deceit for the left now yeah. the dems in chicago is uh you know favors it's all favors you know what i mean it's like uh what what do you what can you do for me you brush my back i'll brush yours you know what i'm saying I and know. and and uh, that's exactly what we see going on with the government today you know what i mean and so it's no government you know i mean it's not a, it's not a legitimate government Really? You, uh, yeah, you, and, hey, 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 Jim, let, let me ask you this, because you're, you're right on everything that you're saying. But I've got to know this, Jim. Have you gone out mm-hmm. to go see the new uh, movie about Ronald Reagan starring Dennis Quaid? That's what I really want to know. No, no, I'm picking up my daughter from Purdue University on Friday, and I'm going to take uh, her and my 17 year old uh, high school son, uh, you know, to take them all, all three of us. In some nice recliners with uh, some uh, a basket of uh, chicken fingers or whatever they got. You know what I'm do you saying? Know, do, do you know? Do you know? I'm I'm actually doing that as well, Jim. Believe it or not, I'm going to take my daughter because I I think that you know Ronald Reagan. He, you know, we can talk about amnesty, but I mean, by and large, everyone loves Ronald Reagan, and I I'm really looking forward to uh, go seeing that movie. I have not seen it yet. From what I understand, it's. Uh, really good. And at least for me, uh, he is somebody who had the perfect mix of he was tough. He did have a great personality. He actually had a, a sense of humor as well. But he also had the policy. And so at least for me, you look at Ronald Reagan and he is somebody who, even though there's some people that would say, oh, he would never be uh, elected today. I don't necessarily know if that's Can true. Can I make another point? Yeah, Can go I ahead. Can I make another point? Yep. You know what? Back then... 
the uh, I, you know, the reason why I voted for Carter was because the media was uh, blowing uh, smoke up uh, uh, in my rectal aperture about yes. uh, you know like he's Ronald Ronnie Reagan, he's going to get us into war. Yep. And I you know and I I don't want to go to war. My dad was uh, in World War II in Korea, uh, you know, a, a, a Marine pilot, and uh, you know and and he he's didn't want me to go into the service because he said I fought a war so that you wouldn't have to, you know, and then look at what we got. You know what I'm saying? Well, and, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, well, uh, so he, well, I, Hey, terrific? Jim, I, it is horrific. I got to run. But here, here's what I would say to you, Jim, is you voted. For the other, One of the other reasons you voted for Reagan, I, I would for Carter, I would be uh, willing to bet is because. You know, the Republicans have always been portrayed by the media. I mean, you go back as, you know, years and years and years. They've always had such harsh things to say about Republicans as have the Democrats. And so, you know, people said, oh, Ron DeSantis is, you know, a great alternative to Donald Trump. He is, uh, you know, he's he's like Donald Trump, but he doesn't have the baggage. And I'm going to tell you, I liked uh, and I like Ron DeSantis a lot. But what I would also say is is that it doesn't matter whether it's Ron DeSantis, whether it's Donald Trump, whether it is J.D. Vance, whether it is you pick the Republican. They're always going to call the Republicans Nazis. They're always going to compare us to Hitler because that's just what they do. Because quite frankly, and, and certainly this is true right now, and Gary and Eric say this all the time, they don't have anything to run on. The Democrats don't have a policy story to tell. And as far as I can see, Lord help us, if Kamala Harris gets into office, we're in a lot of trouble. But when you don't have policy on your side, then you resort to those kind of tax. The thing is, the Democrats have done this for a long time. And again, if it's not Donald Trump being called Hitler, if it's not Donald Trump being the leader of the Nazis and a threat to democracy, then J.D. Vance and Ron DeSantis and whoever else will also be called that. So that's just that's just what the Democrats do. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number. 866-907-3339. Dan Mandis sent for Gary and Eric. This is Red Eye Radio. Brought to you by FPPF, Fuel Power Max. Just because idling is common doesn't make it smart. Idling a diesel uses about a gallon of fuel per hour, which can cost you about $180 per week at $450 per gallon if your truck idles eight hours a day. Idling easily can cost you a few thousand more in fuel alone per year, not including the added engine maintenance expense that results from excessive idling. Harder on your truck's engine than highway driving. In addition to operating costs, many governments impose no idling laws and regulations with fines as high as $25,000. Instead, there are many alternatives. An extra blanket for cold temperatures, window screens for when the weather is warm, bunk heaters and various auxiliary power unit options abound in this day and age too. Many powered just by batteries. Otherwise, diesel and gas gensets burn far less fuel than your truck's engine. Research options to find your fit. Owner Operator Business 101 is provided by Overdrive's Partners in Business program. Go to overdriveonline.com to the Partners in Business section of the website for more details on this and many other topics. Brought to you by Shell Rotella, with advanced synthetic technology is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio, 866-90, Red Eye. Let's go to Debbie real quick in Nebraska on Red Eye Radio. Debbie, how are you? Uh, doing great. Weather's kind of cooled down here a little bit. We're actually going to have a little fall. It's beautiful in Nebraska. Great. Well, go ahead. I'm just, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm over 70 years old, and I never, ever thought I would see America come to the downfall that it has recently observed here. I mean, the, the withdrawal from Afghanistan was just 
a very very sad military operation. I'm my I have a um, uncle that was a brigadier general, one star with the Nebraska Army National Guard, and and uh, so not that I have a lot of military background, but. Um, Again, I prayed home a soldier that was a helicopter door gunner in Vietnam, 1971, and it just turns my stomach to see how they can. I mean, President, former President Trump was invited to Arlington by the Gold Star family, and um, it just makes me shake my head. And I guess I come behind you 100 percent and say, where is the common sense of the people of America? I, and, and I very much appreciate it. You are absolutely right, and I appreciate the call very much from Nebraska. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number, America Studios. Now for Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, here is Dan Mandis. It's 866 90 Red Eye, 866-907-3339. I wanna I wanna present uh, another another version of Never Trumpers for Trump. Because you know, I, I have this this fascination, this dream, this goal of making this hashtag actually become something. And it may already be a hashtag, but I'm I'm noticing a few things. Number one is that there's a lot of people out there that become, become, of course, uh, become to realize that Donald Trump wasn't so bad after all, especially after, you know, three and a half years of Joe Biden. So if you follow me on X, you'll see that I I posted something here a, a few minutes ago, and there's so much cursing. In this particular uh, post from a a guy who is an American, he's an angry American. Now, I don't know if he was at one point a never Trumper, but I can tell you right now that he's getting a little sick and tired of all of this conversation regarding abortion rights. I want you to listen very closely to what this guy has to say. I am so sick of you cowards. Keep on talking about what well, she trying to protect reproductive rights and women's rights and this and that. What the f- happened to all our rights when we had to f- get a mandated vaccine? Boom. He's absolutely right. There's so much cursing in this because this guy is so incredibly passionate. He's so incredibly angry. The reason why he's passionate, the reason why he's angry is because he lost his job because of the vaccine mandates. And that's one of the things that I keep talking about incessantly. Get all these people wondering, oh, you know, were well, the, well, the black Americans, will they vote for Kamala Harris? Will they vote for Donald Trump? Who will they support? I don't know. I'm a white guy. And I'm a very firm believer that we're all individuals and, you know, we're not some some monolith. You know, we we all have individual uh, rights, obviously, and we have different reasons why we vote for different people. But this guy has a valid point. Especially when you look at Joe Biden. And Joe Biden said, if you don't get the vaccine, you will be fired like this guy. And there's a lot of Americans that are out there. And he's absolutely right. Everybody's screaming about the 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 pro uh, the pro choice movement and the reproductive rights and all that kind of stuff. Dude has a valid point. What about the rights that were taken away when he was forced to? Well, he got fired or he was forced to quit because he didn't get a vaccine. So I totally understand if you want to see it's like a minute and a half and there is so much cursing in it that I didn't have time to cover up all of the curse words. But he's really angry. And if you want to hear the rest of it, uh, why don't you check it out? Follow me on X at Dan Manda show. And I uh, have gone ahead and posted that because I think it's a. 
I really think it's emblematic of how passionate people feel about politics these days, far more than usual. And coming up, I am going to play another, I'm going to present another version of Never Trumpers for Trump because we are seeing that all across America where people swore they would never vote for Donald Trump. And now after three and a half years of uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris on the campaign trail, it turns out when you look at the policy, he's not so bad. Got that audio straight ahead on Red Eye Radio right now, 866-90-RED-EYE, 866-907. Let's see. Let's say hello to Santa. I'm I'm a little distracted because my my phone. Here we go. Okay. It was not working. Let's say hello now, though, to Sandy in Nevada on Red Eye Radio. Hey, Sandy. Hi there. Um, I called about Kamala, but one of my favorite Never Trumpers is Leo Terrell, the civil rights attorney. Oh, absolutely. That dude's on fire on Fox News all the time. You need to look at some YouTube when he wasn't on fire for Trump. Oh, my goodness. Venom out his teeth. And I have a hat. Uh, It's Leo 2.0, and he signed it. And I got on Delta Airlines for free cocktails. (laughs) There you go. I've gotten to the front of the line with Leo 2.0 because so many never Trumpers were like, oh, my gosh, I watched Leo and he changed my mind because, you know, he's black, civil rights. And now he says if Trump ever needs him, he is at his second call, whatever he needs. So but I am from California, Southern California, Orange County. And wow. Can you mean, Sandy, if you don't, Sandy, if you don't mind me asking where, because I am from Southern me. California and I'm from Orange County. Costa Mesa. I agree. Uh, you Orlando, you, but I you lived in the rich part. I was in Anaheim and Garden Grove, not so rich. Well, it's rich now. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I if guess you you're right. Million dollar house in Garden Grove. It's there. <laughs> that's very true. Actually, that's very true. Anyway, but now you're in Nevada, so go ahead. Well, well, I'm driving through Nevada. We have a place up in Utah, and I kind of go back and forth um, to help with my uh, granddaughter. But um, California never respected Kamala ever since Willie Brown. So if anybody is for Kamala and wants to hear about her past and how she got to where she is, she didn't work hard unless crawling on your knees with knee pads is working. Um, Willie Brown and Kamala. Willie Brown is now actually he's doing the circuit. Um, But Kamala, nobody in California voted for her. Everybody who's for Kamala right now didn't vote for her in 2016. 2020, whenever the hell she was running, they didn't want her. They paired her with Biden. Why would they pair the one person who had to drop out the soonest? Why would they pair her with Biden? It's a rhetorical question. But they need to they need to look into it. Um, nobody voted for her. Not a single person voted for her. She got into this election. Um, she got on the ticket, never having a single vote. And the only reason is because they didn't want to give up the $270 million that was attached to the Biden-Harris campaign. Other than that, she's worthless. Yeah, um, and, 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 and Sandy, you, you know because you're from California where now California is dealing with the ramifications of Kamala Harris as attorney general because she supported all of that soft on crime policies that are now really emblematic of of the decline of California, because after that was passed, you have all of this crime that is happening. That's happening in, in California. They embrace homelessness. They clearly have embraced crime as well. And, and Kamala Harris, her legacy in California is, among other things, like Willie Brown, but also that uh, those soft on crime policies. And I agree with you, Sandy, and I do appreciate the call. Let's say hello to uh, this is Eduardo on line three on Red Eye Radio. Hey, Eduardo, how are you? Hey, Dan, it's great to talk to you. Long time no here. But uh, the real reason they do this with the Arlington is to distract from the issues, you know, like immigration, crime and other stuff. Notice how the uh, the spokesman um, for uh, the other side, Camilla, they got upset because Camilla was doing an accent, uh, like a different accent uh, on one yep. of her uh, uh, speeches. You know what I said? They got oh, upset I, when I sure did. Different. But see, when it's, yeah, but when it's uh, the former president, oh, yeah, let's bring it on. You notice the double hypocrisy. 
Oh, there, Eduardo, I, I could do all five hours of the radio broadcast <laughs> on the hypocrisy of the media. And yeah, I, I did. I covered those. Um, I covered those those fake accents yesterday. And I also in the first yeah. hour to, of, of this evening's show. And I, I got to tell you that to me, the support and the excitement for Kamala Harris is beginning to wane. And I believe that the reason why it's beginning to wane is because the American people are, are now really, truly seeing the real Kamala Harris. And obviously, Eduardo, as you have noted, the real Kamala Harris is an absolute train wreck. And I do appreciate the call. 866-90-RED-EYE. So the um, socials are full of people that were previously never Trumpers. And now they are part of the Never Trump for Trump, Never Trumpers for Trump uh, movement, which I believe is a movement that is uh, growing by the day. I want to play you some audio of a guy who uh, this was uh, on the socials a couple of weeks ago, and he is very clearly and concisely talking about how at one time he was a Never Trumper and now he is for Donald Trump. In 2016, you would have labeled me as a never Trumper, and I was. I was very outspoken at the time against Donald Trump. I found him to be very crude. I had a major problem with his moral shortcomings, and I just didn't understand why people would follow this man. In fact, when it came time to vote, I wrote in another candidate. However, now in 2024, I will be voting for Donald J. Trump. You say, why have you changed? What has changed your mind over that time period? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, is I'll answer that for all of us. <laughs> the last three and a half years of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. The It's kind of like a, a now age-old adage, if you will. I'd li- love some mean tweets right now. Uh, it really does apply because Donald Trump, of course, uh, people used to always get all upset about the mean tweets and the things that he would say and so forth. But when you look at what Joe Biden has done and Kamala Harris has done, it's nothing compared to those mean tweets. And so for a lot of people, they're looking at the policies they're They've stopped looking at the tweets. They've stopped holding their their hands over their ears. And, oh, I can't believe what he's saying. And they're actually looking at the policy and the pocketbooks and how disastrous Joe Biden has been. One thing is record. So. Donald Trump still says a lot of stupid stuff. I'll be the first to admit that. He tweets some things, says some things that just make me cringe. But I'm more concerned about what a person does compared to what they say. We've had a lot of politicians that say all the right things, but they don't do any of those things. During Donald Trump's presidency, we had a better economy. You can argue that all you want. The Democrats have been in power 12 of the last 16 years, and the economy has been terrible under their leadership. The four years when we had a Republican, it was good. Yeah. I mean, he listen, guy's right. He looks at his pocketbook. He looks at, you know, the world around him, and he realizes that things were a lot better under Donald Trump. And we didn't have any wars under Donald Trump. By the way, we can compare that to the other candidate who we also have their record, It just baffles my mind. Everybody says this is what she's going to do and the change she's going to make. She's in power right now. We can compare record to record. And I'll tell you, I'll take Donald Trump's record any day of the week over what we've had the past three and a half years under Biden and Harris. It's been absolutely abysmal. He's right. And one thing that was not brought up was censorship and about how Joe Biden and Kamala Harris censored Americans on social media. And to be truthful, I'm voting against some things. I am totally against censorship. You would think in the United States of America, we would hold tightly to the freedom of speech and understand that dictatorships take place under censorship and under controlling of speech. And that's exactly what's been happening or attempting to be happening under the Biden-Harris administration. And they're going to continue to do that. Yeah. And, you know, there was that um, interview with uh, Dan Bash the other day and they didn't bring up censorship and they really didn't bring up much of anything because, quite frankly, they know and you know and I know that Kamala Harris can't really answer questions of policy. And they think that you're foolish enough. And it seems to be true because I scroll through TikTok, too, that some of you all are ignorant enough 
to vote for somebody based solely on the color of their skin and their gender and totally overlook the fact that they're trying to take away your First Amendment right, Second Amendment right, the fact that they're trying to censor you, the fact that they're going to tell you this is your candidate and you don't even get to vote, and you'll be okay with all of that because, woohoo, we got the first woman president. Surely you're not that ignorant. Oh, yeah. Democrats are indeed that ignorant. A woman president, man. How exciting. As um, exampled by Jeff Bridges. One final thought from this former never Trumper. For these reasons and many others is why I'm voting for Donald J. Trump this election cycle in November. There you go. Never Trumpers for Trump. Line one is Shep in Cincinnati on Red Eye Radio. Shep, go ahead. I'm not at all a never Trumper for Trump. I turned around and my argument was, if if you were better off before, why shouldn't you pay attention to how you are now? I your your screener. I'm sorry, he must have written it down incorrectly for me. I I argue not at all. I argue the simple policy fact that it's easy enough to look at the pocketbook, and yep. everybody should be able to make that argument and get past the emotional stuff. There is one last thing I did want to add though. I'm in the Midwest. I I drive a lot, but I and I pay for the fuel costs, and I have to eat the cost of the supply chain. Yeah, I have rental property. I have property taxes that have increased by 180 percent because of the fact that there's. Hey, hey, Shep, I want you to hold on, Shep. Hey, Shep, I'm I want you to hold on because I, I've got a couple of questions to ask you, but I got to take a break right now and hit the network eight six six ninety Red Eye. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. Eight six six ninety red eye is the phone number. Eight six six nine zero seven thirty three thirty nine. Dan Mandis in for Gary and Eric. This is Red Eye Radio. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show. From the Unit in America studios. For Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, Dan Mandis, this is Red Eye Radio. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number, 866-907-3339. You can find out more about me on the socials. Uh, follow me, if you would, especially on X at Dan Mandis Show. I'm also on Facebook. Donald Trump gave a long interview to the Daily Mail, and a lot of it. You know, the news cycle is so incredibly fast these days that the Daily Mail finally uh, released this interview in its entirety. A a lot of the a lot of the questions, though, were dated, believe it or not, because of the fact that this was uh, an interview that was done before Kamala Harris's interview with uh, Dana Bash. However, this one comment I thought was uh, really good by the former president. And uh, this is part of what he had to say on Kamala Harris. She's gone back on about 14 different policies all at once. Interestingly, a political historian I just left, we're talking about some things and said, in history, on occasion, somebody will go back on one major policy and they'll change. She's gone back on every single thing she's ever said, which means that she's not going to do any of it. She's only doing it to get elected. See, I I thought people keep trying to make uh, nicknames for Kamala Harris. I I like Flip Floppola. Kamala Flip Floppola. All right, well, maybe it needs some work, but truly it, it is really indicative of what she's done since she announced that she was running for president. As Donald Trump says, Flip Floppola, Kamala Harris, she has flip flopped on every major issue 
And she obfuscates the fact that she has changed all these things. When she did have the interview with Dana Bash, what did she say? Well, my values haven't changed. Well, if your values haven't changed, but your policy initiatives or the what you ran on when you were running for president back in 2019, 2020, that is completely changed. So something changed or you're simply lying to the American people. Because if you felt one way politically and then you've completely changed, then either you're lying or your value and your character and your character has changed. Certainly, your political viewpoints have changed. But the bottom line is you can't trust Kamala Harris. And, and Trump was pointing out that she is all over the place policy wise. So if you're deciding to vote for Kamala Harris, do you vote for her past positions, her current positions or what she's actually done? I mean, think about it. So her past positions, she wanted to have taxpayer funded benefits for illegal aliens. She wanted to spend billions of dollars on the Green New Deal. She wanted to raise taxes. She wants open borders. She wanted to defund the police. She wanted to ban fracking. I mean, I could go on, but I know that you folks understand because you listen to Red Eye Radio and Gary and Eric. And so you get all of this. Her current policies are much more moderate. But I will tell you, don't believe her. Donald Trump is absolutely right. She's only saying these things to get elected. Now, this is an audio bite from the Congressional Black Caucus during the DNC, and they did say the quiet part out loud. We got 70 days to act right, y'all. That's right. Now, after 70 days, we can go back there and crazy. Yep. <laughs> right? I mean, that, that's what Kamala Harris is doing. She's acting and playing the role of a moderate so that she can get elected, and then they're going to start acting crazy again. We got 70 days to act right, y'all. That's right. Now, after 70 days, we can go back there and crazy. <laughs> right? And so that's why the media has got to hold Kamala Harris accountable, and the Democrats as well. Is she saying that she's a moderate on all of these issues to get the votes of the people? And then she goes full-blown communist. After she gets into office, then she reopens the border and all of that other nonsense. She supports defunding the police, raising taxes. It goes on and on. Or, by the way, do you vote for her past accomplishments? The problem there is that focusing on what she's done as vice president, she's got a terrible resume. Failure of Afghanistan, of course, the open border, everything else. And so I think that that's one of the reasons why you're seeing some slipping in the polls. You know, yesterday we told you about the Trafalgar numbers where Donald Trump was leading or tied in many of the battleground states. Betting odds still has Donald Trump slightly ahead as well. You know, some of these uh, various outfits have have different uh, results. This is why I'm not paying all that close of attention to the polling. Earlier tonight, I was telling you about Nate Silver, 538. By the way, I believe Nate is the one that said that Hillary Clinton was going to win in a landslide. So take this for what it's worth. But he's got Trump 56.7 percent and he's got Kamala Harris at 43 percent. A month ago, it was basically flipped. Donald Trump, according to Nate Silver in 538, he is leading in the battleground states of Pennsylvania, Nevada, Arizona, North Carolina and Georgia. Kamala Harris is uh, leading in Wisconsin and Michigan. But I'm going to tell you that I'm not paying attention to the polls right now because it is still too close to call. And that's why people who are following the polls and following them obsessively, it just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It, It simply doesn't. But I think that one of the reasons why Kamala is beginning to drop in the polls, a number of reasons. Number one, I just went through her flip flopping. But number two, there's this issue of the accents. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. And you all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. I mean, she just sounds ridiculous. And I think that people are beginning to understand. See, here's the thing you put Kamala Harris 
and and you go on TikTok and you go on X and you go on the socials and you put the absolutely cringeworthy accents, the really terrible accents, and you put those up on social media. Maybe you put those next to Kamala Harris, the way that she typically speaks. That stuff goes viral. And people are beginning to realize how ridiculous Kamala Harris actually acts. You know who knows that? Peter Ducey. Since when does the vice president have what sounds like a southern accent? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I I mean, this is... (laughs) She was talking about unions in Detroit using Uh one tone of voice. Now, I I love how, just notice this, cringy Jean-Pierre... And her righteous indignation. Oh, I can't believe you're asking about this. Is this something that you think? Same line. Okay, Peter. That she uh, she used the same line in Pittsburgh, and it sounded like she at least had some kind of a southern drawl. I mean, do you hear the question that you're, I mean, do you think Americans seriously think that this is an important question? They care, you know what they care about? They care about the economy. They care about lowering costs. They care about health care. That's what Americans care about. So, That's what they okay, want to well, hear. This is something... They care about, your colleague just asked me about, democ- what basically we talked about, went back and forth about democracy and freedom. That's that, what they care about. I'm not even going to entertain some question about the press. It's just, it, it's just hearing it sounds so ridiculous. It, it, it really, you know what? Do you know what sounds ridiculous? Hearing her accents. Corinne Jean-Pierre, I love that. Just hearing this sounds ridiculous. Um... Yeah, actually, hearing Kamala Harris in those accents does sound ridiculous. Well, but hearing it is... The question, I'm talking about the questions, is is just insane. Is that how she talks in meetings here? I, I'm just... Peter, we're, we're moving on. We're still moving on. Moving on, moving on. Nothing to see here. See, I love how she just blows it off. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. But here's the thing, is that when... You you listen to her when she's in, in front of these crowds in Detroit, as Peter Ducey pointed out. Then you hear her in other places. It's almost like, will the real Kamala Harris stand up? I got a lot of reaction to something I said earlier in the broadcast where I, I said, you know, she changes her voice about as often as she changes her policy positions, which is all the time. Which is all the time. I love what I played this earlier. Got a lot of reaction to it as well. You can follow me on uh, X at Dan Manda show. Terrence K. Williams. He's a black guy. He's got a couple million followers on X alone. He's black and he's listening to Kamala Harris and he's horrified. Let's just get through the next 64 days. (laughs) Kamala, you're going to stop mocking Southern black women. You're going to stop that right, right now. You are an Indian woman from California. <laughs> you don't talk like that. We got six more there, y'all. <laughs> you gonna stop mocking Southern black women. Yeah, I happen to have a whole lot of them in my family, and you gonna stop playing with them, Kamala. You gonna stop it right now. So that is Terrence K. Williams. I'm in the South. I host a morning show in Nashville, Tennessee on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. And I, I gotta tell you that... Uh, The people that I know who are Southerners, they do find what she is doing in changing her voice, as Terrence K. Williams pointed out. It's repulsive and it's offensive. Nancy Mace, of course, you know, she is a congresswoman uh, from South Carolina. She says this whole thing is actually racist. Well, it's it's actually kind of racist mm. if you think about it. I mean, like, that's the thing. I think the, the biggest racism, the biggest sexism is actually with the radical left. And it's dangerous because it's so subcutaneous. It's so under the surface, right? And it's an act. She's from California. She, like, grew up in Canada. She's from California. They don't talk like that. You know, in in my district, there are people that have lots of different accents, Southern included, depending on what town you're from. That's all perfectly normal, but not in her line of work, not in her job, not where she grew up. I mean, I say y'all, that's about as Southern as I get. I've lived all over the country. There's no, you just, it's just bizarre. And I think it's racist. Honestly, it's just the strangest thing. Well, it, it is bizarre and it's about honesty and integrity. 
Kamala Harris is basically lying about who she is. She keeps doing it. Nobody really seems to care in the media. But I do wonder if this will have an erosive impact over time on her support among black women. You're going to stop mocking Southern black women. I'm going to go back to Shep now in Cincinnati. Shep, appreciate you holding on uh, over the top of the hour uh, news. Shep, I know that we got cut off because of the network. The network waits for no one, as I always say. So let's wrap up our conversation. Uh, You were talking about what Ronald Reagan said a long time ago, which is, are you better off now than you were four years ago? And, And really, that is the question that the American people have to ask themselves in this election. When I was... Uh, in 1979, when he was running, I was ineligible to vote. Okay, I became eligible to vote by '84, by by far, and it was an easy pick for Wagon. At the time, I knew I would have voted for him just because of that aspect, because I was dealing with Carter. There is one quick thing that I'm added because I've thought about this over time. When uh, I was in school in 1983. And couldn't vote for him yet, but I was I would have voted for him at the time. Uh, at the time, the Lebanon murders happened with the Marines, and he immediately pulled the Marines out of Lebanon, and that showed a sign of weakness. Mm. There is one last little thing, and this matters in terms of Trump's presidency in particular. Every president is the ultimate in on-the-job training. The proof is in the pudding. What Trump did was on-the-job training. He realized that he had assigned people to the wrong roles. And no matter what, we still came out ahead. And no matter what, the same part of proof is on, in the tr- on-the-job training. When Biden came in and he reversed all the other stuff, look what happened to us. And then let's look back what Trump or what Reagan said to begin with. Are you better off now or are you better off before? Shep, I appreciate the call. All in one hit. You're right, Shep. And I got to run, unfortunately, because, again, because of the clock. But I appreciate the call. More of your calls coming up next. 866-90-RED-EYE. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio. Toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. Eight six six ninety Red Eye is the phone number. Ross is calling from Nebraska on Red Eye Radio. Hey Ross, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Go ahead. Uh, so, I guess this is kind of circling back to the whole never Trumpers and them changing their mind and all. I mean, it's easy when you compare Kamala Harris to any candidate because she's a fairly weak candidate. It's like getting the choice between a stick of celery and a rock for lunch. I mean, it's not that great either way to put it. But um, I think that a lot of never Trumpers are just at the end of Trump's tenure, uh, they weren't big fans of a lot of his kind of non-conservative policies. I mean, we all got stimulus checks that I'm pretty sure had his name on them, uh, which was not a very conservative thing. So I think that I left a kind of a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths who want fiscal restraint and things like that. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was saying that, so as far as, you know, we get all these, I think that the never Trumpers were just sort of, uh, especially at the end of his tenure, I mean, he passed all these very inflationary fiscal policies like the stimulus checks that everybody got. What what I would say, Ross, and, and you're right, there's a lot of folks who were never Trumpers. I think they fall into a couple of different categories. You had the people that were never Trumpers uh, on on both sides of the aisle because uh, they didn't like the way that he spoke. You have the never Trumpers who were probably on the left or independent who were like, okay, so we're we're never going to vote for this guy. We don't like him. We don't like the way that he speaks, so on and so forth. You do have a lot of people that didn't like Trump's language and tweets but then they grew to appreciate his policies. Now, you're right. Uh, I will tell you that you are right in the sense that Donald Trump, he spent a lot of money. He spent a lot of money even before COVID. I totally get that. And so a lot of conservatives and, and Republicans will tell you 
that he did spend a lot of money. Now, during COVID, you could argue that those stimulus checks were necessary. I'm not going to relitigate that whole thing. I believe uh, my comment at the time was that I understood the need for it, but my worry was that it would get out of hand. And I'm not a big fan of government handouts, to say the least. Of course, comes uh, Joe Biden as our economy economy was opening back up and improving by the day. And then Biden comes in and he says, you know, hold my beer. And then he gives, uh, you know, you had the Inflation Reduction Act. You have you have the um, you have the oh, what was it called? The stimulus checks that came in right after he American Rescue Plan, the American Rescue Plan that caused inflation to skyrocket as well. So I do understand what you say, that there are some things that Donald Trump has done that are not traditionally conservative or Republican. But I do think that by and large, Trump did a lot of really good things, lowering taxes. He does want and did want a smaller government. He's still looking for that uh, lower regulation as well. And just so you know, I, I don't like to come on either my local show in Nashville or here on uh, Red Eye Radio in the network. My job is not as a, a Trump apologist. Uh, I, this is a guy who I like. I like his policies. I like what he's done. There's some things that that I don't like. So some people will call up sometimes and, you know, they'll start trying to argue with me about, you know, some of the things that Donald Trump has said or some of the things that Donald Trump has done. And I just shrug my shoulders and I say, OK, but you you have to look at you have to look at the totality of his presidency and you have to look at what he had uh, going against him at the time. That's one of the reasons why I think Donald Trump is such a good president is because, number one, yes, he did spend a lot of money. We had COVID going on. He spent a lot of money before COVID. He was trying to rebuild our military. So there, there's a lot of different things that you can say about Donald Trump, the amount of money that he spent, the circumstances, what he was spending the money on, so on and so forth. By and large, when you look at presidents and you look at politicians, their impact is felt immediately, but it's also felt years and years and years down the road. I believe that Donald Trump's legacy will be very good the further we get away from his presidency. And I appreciate the call. Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. Now for Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, here is Dan Mandis. 86690 Red Eye, 866 You can follow me on X, I wish you would, at Dan Mandis Show. Got a lot of folks that have, that have been holding, so I want to go ahead and get to some of these calls real quick. This is Debbie calling from the People's Republic of California on Red Eye Radio. Debbie, how are you? I'm good, thanks. And I'm calling regarding the flip-flopping of uh, Kamala Harris. Um, You know, back when she first was on the scene to replace Biden, and I can't remember the Democratic operative's name or um, somebody well-known, I believe, but his strategy to her was you're going to – and I'm – paraphrasing okay yep (laughs) the strategy was you're gonna have to flip flop flip flop like a fish the liberals will forgive you once you're elected the left doesn't care basically if you flip flop and that's exactly the strategy she's applying so there's no guessing at what she's doing that's exactly She's following that operative directive, you know, and I'm not even sure if he said lie in there. You know, you're going to. Well, have to yeah, lie. Debbie, Debbie, you're, you're right. So a couple of things. Number one is you've had some of these folks out there that are saying what she's basically got to do is she has to lie. That's what Kamala Harris needs to do. She has to lie if she's going to be elected president of the United States. I I played this earlier. Maybe you missed it. This is the Congressional uh, Black Caucus at the DNC. We got 70 days to act right, y'all. 
That's right. Now, after seven days, we can go back there and crazy. Yep. <laughs> right? I, I love the diabolical laugh at the end there, by the way. But, but that, yeah, isn't that one? Yeah, I mean, Debbie, that's how, they, <laughs> that's how they operate. It's you've got to lie, get elected, then we're going to do what we want to do. And so I don't, I don't exactly. think the liberals are mad at the flip-flopping of Kamala Harris. I think that she's doing what is to be expected. You lie, you get elected, and then you destroy the country. And I appreciate the call, Debbie. Thank you very much. This is uh, Jay calling from Massachusetts on Red Eye Radio. Jay, how are you? Oh, well, uh, if I felt any better, I'd hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How are you? You're doing a, I'm good. You're doing a great job. Thank you. As we call from liberal Massachusetts. Anyhow, I agree with you. Polls are useless at this point. That's not why I call. Hold on. Yeah. I got my theory. You ready? Okay, go. Okay, quickly. This is why, uh, I'm for Trump, all the way, but this is why Harris is going to win. They decided, as you said, they're going to lie. So what does she do? She flip-flops. We, we know that. So mm-hmm. she takes all of Trump's, what, policies, which are great, and everyone knows they're the best for the country. So the people say, oh, okay, so now we'll vote for her because, number one, she has Trump's policies, which we really like, but we can't say, and she's a woman, and she's a woman of diversity. So now we have everything, and that's what's going to happen. I hope not, but that's my theory. Well, as an old radio guy, let me ask you this. Uh, when, you, when you watch the machine, that's what I call it, the machine. When you watch the machine that is against Trump and for Harris, and we're talking about, you know, by and large, social media, we're talking about Hollywood, obviously the mainstream media as well. There's a lot that Donald Trump has got to overcome. It's not just about politics. It's also about battling all of those other issues. Well, the issue is that, listen, personalities matter, unfortunately, and a lot of people just can't take him. I happen to like his personality, but I'm like that, too. But that's unfortunate. They don't look at the real issues. But now they're going to say, hey, he he had the good issues. Now she's got the good issues. She's a woman. She's of diversity, which is great. And so now we have no trouble. Uh, And and that's what's going to happen. And everyone's going to say, how'd that happen? That's how it happened. All right, Jay, thank you very much for the call and uh, great points. Warren is in, uh, let's see, oh, I think I accidentally hung up on Warren Warren in Arizona. I apologize for that, Uh, Warren. So if you want to call back, we'll get you right on. This is Don in Portland on Red Eye Radio. Hey, Don. Hey, great job tonight. You know, you talk about the never Trumpers. I hope there's boatloads by the millions of never Kamala-ers. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I look, I don't know, uh, and a lot of people voting for Trump. I look at this, this whole rigmarole routine from her and Biden, and I, I wonder if these guys think they're on a perpetual uh, pep rally, uh, whether they've thought their jobs are nothing more than being in high school and pretending they're on a, a homecoming week. I look at that quote uh, from Kamala doing her Southern Bell routine. And I said to your, to your call screener, is this woman high? I swear she sounds like she's stoned. And I know a lot about that being here in Oregon. And <laughs> I tell you, it's uh, truly, uh, she gets in, this country's in deep trouble. There's just no way around it. And she, it's just unbelievable. And to the previous caller, he's got a good point. You know, she can lie it up real good. And people will absorb maybe half of that and say, okay. And she can dupe a lot of people. We've just got to pray that we have a lot of smart people looking at at this objectively. That is what's going to make this work for our country. Don, let me ask you a question uh, since I've got a second here, but but make your answer quick. But you're in Portland, and, I mean, Portland is an absolute train wreck. One of the things I like about this job when I get to fill in is talking to people from across the country – So is Portland as bad as they say, or I'm sure that there's nice areas in Portland too, right? There are nice areas in Portland. So just go back to the uh, Bush 41. They referred to Portland as Little Beirut. Uh, If if they ever, if a Republican or even Bob Dole back when he was uh, campaigning here, they had to have so much security around the candidates as they came to Portland. If you drive up to Portland and look at it from the south going north, 
you see a beautiful city carved by the Columbia River, Mount Hood to the east, and, and a beautiful skyline, and you say, my gosh, it's gorgeous here. And there are great parts. But Portland and a lot of the more rural townships are starting to get badly absorbed by a lot of homeless. Mm. And so you've just got to know where you're going to go. You've got to yep. know where you're going to go. But, but it is a beautiful city. Oregon as a whole is tremendous, but we're mismanaged by 25 years of unilateral uh, democratic rule. And yep. it overwhelms and people that have great intentions. You're absolutely right. And I appreciate the call. And I talk about that all the time. The states and these cities, they have Democrat rule. And you see the negative impact of that kind of rule, a soft on crime, high taxes, sadly, terrible schools. And people just keep voting for the same party over and over again. Uh, Warren is in Arizona. Warren, sorry, hang up on you. Go ahead, sir. That's okay. No problem. Uh, I just wanted, first of all, I think you guys are great. Um, I just wanted to mention some, a couple things. Uh, one thing that nobody's using in the Trump campaign, and I can't believe they're not doing this, is Kamala Harris is on video saying that all 18 to 24-year-olds are stupid. I mean, oh, they yes. have a video of her saying that. And, and they're not using it in any of their ads or any of their campaigns. Well, let me, so, 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 so Warren, is, just, hey, Warren, just if I can, let me go ahead and play that for folks. This is Kamala Harris. And it's a specific phase of life. Remember, age is more than a chronological fact. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories. And they have a resident assistant. So that is Kamala Harris talking about how 18 to 24 year olds are stupid. You're absolutely right. I think, uh, Warren, it has been used in the occasional ad, but I don't know if Donald Trump himself specifically has used it. But you're right. That's a great comment to use against her. Yeah. And the other thing is, and I'm, you know, I know I know you only have a certain amount of time, but uh Trump's cases that he's dealing with, you got to remember, this woman, she met with all of these prosecutors, every single one of them, from Fannie Willis to, you know, Letitia James to Alvin Bragg. She met with all these people at the White House. They even have the White House laws to prove it. So just that alone should dismiss all these cases against Trump. And, you know, and that's that's one of the other things. And, and you know, nobody's talking about that. I mean, she is the person that is running and she's always claiming that trump wants to weaponize the justice system but yet she did weaponize the justice system and actually met with all these prosecutors if trump would have done that with vance and let's say he was president with vance and then they did that to say investigating obama they'd be screaming from the hilltops and warren you're and- absolutely right and i appreciate you calling back 866-90 red eye will return next Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. Eight six six ninety red eye is the phone number. Eight six six nine zero seven thirty three thirty nine. Dan Mandis in for Eric and Gary. By the way, the great news is they'll be back Sunday night, Monday morning. Uh, coming up in the next hour, uh, we're going to talk about a couple of different things. Number one, there's this big story about Alexa. I apologize if you have it next to you and it's suddenly gone off. However. There's big uh, there's a big story out there about um, those and what they were talking about and answering when they were asked political questions. It's really interesting. So we're going to talk about that in the next hour. Also, we've got another horrifying story related to the Secret Service. And so we've got uh, two of those stories and a whole lot more straight ahead on Red Eye Radio. Uh, Let me say hello, though, very quickly to this is Tim calling from Milwaukee on a red eye. Hey, Tim, how are yeah. you? Good. How are you doing? <clears throat> um, I just want to mention, no matter how good Trump might seem to do in the future, if he if it turns out that way, uh, if, you, if you remember back when Obama was running, he's, he was just a junior senator, remember? Everybody kept saying, oh, he'll never win, he'll never win. 
I remember that everybody, everybody was saying it. Even local talk show hosts were saying it. He'll never win, you know, he'll never win. And he turned out to be quite a winner. So my point is, remember that and always run like you're behind yeah, no matter how absolutely. far ahead you think you are. You know, it's funny. It's funny, it, it, it's funny, Tim, it's funny you say that because I remember when Obama <laughs> – was running and I I immediately was terrified of Barack Obama as a political candidate because that uh-huh. dude can deliver a message like no one's business. It's like I've made the joke before yeah. Yeah. where the guy right. the guy walks into a living room and he's got an echo behind him. I mean, it's just as a guy who can deliver a message, he is I'm not going to say he's unmatched, but he's among the absolute best. So and right. given the fact that we have such low information voters out there, all you really need to be able to do is convey a message. You see, that was that was one of many problems of Joe Biden, but he just couldn't defend his message. That's why you're seeing right. uh, that's why you're seeing uh, Kamala Harris now go up in the polling is because at the very least she can complete a sentence. Uh, was that all you had, Tim? Do you have anything else? I got about 40 seconds no, left. No, that's that's it. But I do want to ask you a question. Who do you think is the most – who do you think is the best speaker uh, above Obama? Who do I think is the, the best speaker, like, oh, above Obama? I'd say Ronald Reagan. Yeah. I, I would Ronald say Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Yeah, he, he – Reagan had that Hollywood way of speaking, and he also had a great sense of humor. You know, Obama was very just <laughs> – yeah. You know, he he his vocals would be soaring. But Ronald Reagan, he had that sense of humor and he really did have that ability to connect. I don't feel like, says the conservative, I don't feel like Obama had that really that ability to connect like Ronald Reagan did. Uh, Ronald Reagan had that ability to just look you in the eye, uh, tell you the honest to God's truth. And he would and he, um, could, he would really connect. And I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Talk about everything from politics, social issues, and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show. From the Unit and America studios, for Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, Dan Mandis, this is Red Eye Radio. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number. Gary and Eric return next Sunday night, Monday morning. You can find out more about me on the socials. I'm on uh, Facebook, at Dan Manda Show. I'm also on X, also Dan Manda Show. I host a morning show in Nashville, Tennessee on Super Talk 99.7 WTN, a proud affiliate of Red Eye Radio. We have new news regarding Donald Trump's attempted assassination, courtesy of Josh Hawley. He appeared on Fox News and Jesse Waters last night. This is breaking news. It's actually... The first story on the Daily Mail, and yes, it does have to do with Secret Service agents and who is actually in charge that day and what exactly happened and who was there on that horrific day. I want you to listen very closely because apparently, according to a whistleblower, Josh Hawley is saying that the people that were there to protect Donald Trump we're not actually Secret Service agents at all. Well, what I've heard tonight, Jesse, is that most of the agents who were there at that rally in Butler were not Secret Service agents. They were, in fact, Homeland Security agents. And get this, most of those Homeland Security agents, the only training that they received was an online webinar, a two-hour online webinar. And I'm told that about half the time, the sound to the webinar didn't even work. Are you kidding me? Now, I'm just going to be honest. I'm not going to pretend to know the differences between, 
you know, a Secret Service agent and um, you know, there are various, various law enforcement agencies out there. And I, I don't really know the difference between a, a Homeland Security agent and a Secret Service agent. What I do know is that Secret Service is all about protection. It is about protecting the president and, and very powerful people that does take specialized training. So to hear Josh Hawley talk about this is just like they pulled people from Homeland Security and, and they shoved them in the Secret Service and kind of hoped for the best. Hey, Homeland Security officers, watch this video and go protect Donald Trump. It's like, are you kidding me? That's really what you thought would be a good idea? I mean, the more that we find out about this particular incident, this assassination attempt on Donald Trump, the more we are horrified and and asking for more questions. And so Holly is is saying, yeah, they didn't have enough personnel either locally or in the Secret Service that they actually had to pull these Homeland Security agents. Then they watch a video, you know, to learn how to protect Donald Trump. And the video sound didn't work. Are you kidding me? One two hour video and the sound wasn't working and they didn't think it would be a good idea to, oh, I don't know, maybe fix the sound and make them watch it from the beginning. I mean, listen, this is what the whistleblowers are saying. And it's horrifying. Donald Trump is one of the most hated men in America, who also happens to be one of the most loved men in America. But he's an important guy. And for the Secret Service, it would appear from what Josh Hawley is saying, for the Secret Service to skimp on his security is astronomically stupid. The president of the United States, former president of the United States, Donald Trump, is sent out on stage. Most of the people there aren't trained. They're not qualified. They only got a webinar training, and even that didn't work. It is absolutely outrageous. You know what doesn't work clearly? What clearly doesn't work is the Secret Service. That is what's clear. I mean, we could also expand this into the whole of government, which also doesn't work. But Fox News puts it this way. Imagine a thousand people logging on to Microsoft Teams at the same time after being informed at the last minute that everyone needs to log in individually. One whistleblower told that Josh Hawley. Once it got rolling, the Secret Service instructor simply could not figure out how to get the audio working on the pre-recorded videos. Apparently, they're also the same videos that they had last year. All told, they said they restarted the videos approximately six times. And the content was not very helpful. Here's more from Josh Hawley. I'm told that actually agents, Homeland Security agents, were pulled off of child exploitation cases, child endangerment cases, the stuff they normally do. They don't normally do protective detail work at all. They were pulled off those cases, said, here, you're going to go guard the former president of the United States. Watch this webinar. Oops, it doesn't really work. That's all right. Go out into the field anyway. This is a nightmare. And we still have no answers. The only reason we know this stuff is because of whistleblowers. Well, that's exactly right. The only reason we know these things is, yes, as as Josh Hawley said, because of the whistleblowers. And by the way, what's being lost in all of this and some of the coverage is I want you to think about this. These folks were investigating in Homeland Security. They were investigating things like child exploitation. So they were taken off of the role of trying to save children to make up for the inefficiencies of the Secret Service. And if you're the Secret Service, well, what do they do? Do they pull people off of Homeland Security, which they did, which means that now they're short on trying to save children? I mean, is it really that bad within the government, within the Secret Service? Is it really that bad? Did Joe Biden skinny dipping in front of his agents scare off so many Secret Service agents that now there's nobody left? I mean, that's what it sounds like. And so to just recap, of course, we know the assassination attempt on July 13th and this happens. And from that day forward, 
we find out more and more and more about what went wrong from the Secret Service's standpoint. Not only on that day, but also the lead up. There was, and this is just off the top of my head. There was a lack of training. As evidenced by Josh Hawley and his whistleblowers, a lack of personnel. The equipment didn't work. Remember the whole story about the the radios not operating on the same frequency? They were incompatible. The equipment didn't work. The Secret Service failed to communicate with local authorities time and time again. They had the shooter in sight. They said that he was suspicious, but they did nothing about it. Then they lost him. They allowed Donald Trump to go up on that stage knowing there was a suspicious person walking around and possibly a threat, yet they allowed Donald Trump to go up on that stage. There was nobody guarding that roof that the would-be assassin was on. And now apparently there is also a discrepancy as to who actually got off that first shot at the would-be assassin. Because we've been told all along that it was the government sniper, the Secret Service sniper, up on the roof of that other building. But now we're finding out, oh, no, 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 it was a local person on the ground, not up on the roof. Now, I don't know if that's six to one, half a dozen to another, but the bottom line is, why does the story keep changing? Why are we not finding literally anything out from the Secret Service and its investigation, but we're finding out all of these things from whistleblowers? We almost lost Donald Trump that day. And again, I'm going to tell you over and over and over again, I'm... I'm not somebody who is out here, you know, as a cheerleader for Donald Trump. I like him as a president. I respect him as a president. He did great things for this country, in my opinion. I'm not an apologist for his bad tweets or some of the things that he says or does, but I have a lot of respect for him and what he's accomplished. And we almost lost him that day. I mean, it was like a quarter of an inch if. And so whenever I, I, I hear, and it's like the, the, every, every week and a half to two weeks, we find something out from the Secret Service investigation. They got like a myriad of investigations that are going on, but we don't really find anything out. It's all the whistleblowers that are connecting with Josh Hawley. And I can't believe that more people aren't ticked off. I mean, I understand that the Republicans are. I certainly am. And when Donald Trump comes within, you know, a half an inch, a quarter of an inch, maybe. Of getting a bullet through the brain and and you don't have the Democrats that are screaming to high heaven. Why are we not finding out more about this investigation? I mean, that's what really should be happening. Especially after everything that I've just mentioned. Here's more from Josh Hawley. Yeah, all I can say is that is not what the director told Congress. And you just played the clip. I was sitting right there in the Senate when he testified that it was a Secret Service counter sniper who neutralized the threat. That is, took out crooks. He said nothing about another sniper, a local, nothing at all. Jesse, this is a pattern now. Why aren't these guys out there, Secret Service and FBI, doing regular briefings, answering questions, giving us answers? They're not doing any of that. They're hoarding the information. They're keeping it from the public. And it, this has gone on too long. I mean, people have got to get fired for this. Well, people have got to get fired. And the bigger issue is people, the the department itself, the Secret Service, they need to change whatever protocols they need to change. Because, as I said a little bit ago, Donald Trump is the most hated and the most loved man in America, which is kind of interesting to think about it, really. But there's a lot of people, and I'm sorry to put it this way, but it's true. There's a lot of people that are gunning for Donald Trump. And I have zero faith in the Secret Service. 86690 Red Eye, 86690 Red Eye. This is Jay calling from Maryland on Red Eye Radio. Jay, how are you? 
boy, uh, thank goodness, uh, at least he had a couple of snipers there that uh, were able to save him. Yep. That's not why I called. Um, I think this is uh, kind of simple. Do you remember the days when Trump would brand his opponents so well? Yep. Crooked Hillary, Little Marco, Low Energy Jeb, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's got quite a handle on his current opponent. And I don't think the terms that he's using, the communist, socialist, totalitarian stuff, resonates with uh, most Americans, because I think half of us don't even know what half of that stuff means. Right. What I think would work where he could use those terms to describe her policies and then add the fact that these policies are un-American. All Americans can relate to un-American. And I think his surrogates could use it. And I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Chase Gallagher's show uh, late at night, but he has this segment, I think he calls it Common Sense, But at the end, he has like this rubber stamp that stamps this board uh, that has a round insignia that says common sense. Mm. And I think that at the end of one of Trump's commercials, it could just have a round picture of his opponent with a diagonal line through it. And underneath it, just a caption that says her policies are un-American and then move right to. Trump is going to make America prosperous again, healthy again, Mm -hmm. great again, et cetera. And I think people can relate to the un-American thing. Well, and and, and Jay, you're you're right, but Jay got to run, but you're right. But here's one thing that I would say is the more that we get into this campaign, the more Kamala Harris, her policies are literally being ripped off from Donald Trump. So then you've got to, and I think this is part of the, problem with Trump trying to brand Kamala is which Kamala do you brand? Do you brand the current Kamala who is pretending to be a moderate or the previous Kamala? You brand her with her own words in the commercials. You show her own words and you cherry pick the ones that are un-American, not the ones that she swiped from him. And you brand them as un-American. And I think he could get some traction with that especially if he just pounded at home and just kept pounding it, pounding it, pounding it. All right, Jay, thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number, 866-907-3339. Dan Mandis here. This is Red Eye Radio. Brought to you by Hot Shot Secret. Hi, I'm Jen Loomis, a transport safety expert at J.J. Keller, and I'm here to share a tip on roadside inspections. Drivers must always be prepared for a roadside inspection. This means drivers should always have their personal, vehicle, and company credentials organized and ready, and having any shipment paperwork, such as bills of lading or hazardous material shipment emergency response information, organized and ready for the inspection official. Just an FYI, the top two violations written against drivers every year, as well as during Operation Road Check, are log general form and manner and log not current. Both are completely avoidable if the driver keeps the log accurate, compliant, and current at all times. Having the vehicle ready for inspection involves the driver conducting daily inspections and making sure any problems that are discovered are immediately corrected. Vehicle readiness also requires the company to make sure that the vehicle is current on all scheduled maintenance and that the maintenance schedule is adequate. This will make sure the driver is being given a sound vehicle to start with. This tip was brought to you by J.J. Keller & Associates. Visit us at jjkeller.com. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. Eight six six ninety red eye is the phone number. By the way, coming up after the next break, I'm going to do the craziest story that I've seen today, and it involves the listening devices that start with the letter A. I'm not going to say it yet. I'm not going to say it now because I don't want your listening devices to go off. 
But y'all know what I'm talking about. The listening device that begins with an A. There's a crazy story out there involving her. And it is coming up after the uh, next break. It is an insane story. So I want to uh, get to that. And right now, I want to say hello to uh, this is Kevin in Arizona on Red Eye Radio. Hey, Kevin. Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm good. How are you? I'm blessed to be alive in, in the world in which we live today. Uh, my comment is uh, really, really quick, but it's, it's to the point. Uh, without the Democrats or the independents, we would live in a chaotic world. And the working class would have no right, absolutely none. But with the candidate in which we face today, uh, Donald J. Dump, as I call him, uh-huh. um, <laughs> don't laugh at that. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you take any person, any other candidate, say from, from anywhere, that had the baggage that he has, he should need, he should not be able to run a PTA meeting. Hey, hey, Kevin, can I? All right. So can I ask um, when you say that without the Democrats, the country would be in chaos. So you don't feel like right now the country is in chaos. You don't feel like we have a lot of chaos going on. You got the open border. We got crime all over the place. Uh, We had the, you know, failed pull out of Afghanistan. That was kind of chaotic. Do you do you not see all the chaos that Joe Biden has caused? Well, first of all, uh, I forget, you know, I forgot your name. What is your name again? Dan. 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 First of all, the border has been in chaos for a hundred years. No, 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 Kevin. You're not going to get away with that. You're not. I'm not going to let you get away with that. That is Democrat talking points. You know damn well because you're a smart guy, Kevin. You're a smart guy. You know that Donald Trump came in. And he got the border in relative order. And your candidate, Kevin, Joe Biden, opened it back up with the help of Kamala Harris. I'm not going to let you get away with that, but nice try. Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. Now for Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, here is Dan Mandis. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number, and my name is Dan Mandis. A quick note from the about previous caller. His name was uh, Kevin. <laughs> he gets on. I don't even know how long he was uh, holding. But if if you missed it, if you're just joining us, a guy named Kevin calls. He's out of Arizona. And Kevin, bless your heart. And I'm saying that in the snarky so- Southern way. <clears throat> but I think he held on for quite some time. And I, I, just, I wonder, he gets on <clears throat> and he says, if it wasn't for the Democrats, America would be in chaos. And so my comment to that is, I, and I let him speak. I let him speak for about 45 seconds to a minute. And then I asked him, "Okay, well, let's look at America. I mean, we had wide open borders. We've got, you know, basically three and a half years of wide open borders. We have, you know, you can talk about interest rates. You could talk about the pullout of Afghanistan. I brought up all of these things. And so he started going down this road of, well, America's always had a a, a broken immigration system, you know, just right out of cringe Jean-Pierre's playbook. And so I think that part of the part of that conversation could have been, you know, me trying to educate Kevin in uh, Arizona. But here's the thing. If if you are someone who I think he was, I'm going to be honest, I think he was trying to troll the host. I, I think that's what he was trying to do. I think he was trying to troll the host because y- you can't come on a show if you've been listening to any length of time. And and try to say something as absurd as that. 
Has the immigration system been broken for a long time? Yeah. And Donald Trump is trying to fix it. And we all know what the former president did. He put in remain in Mexico. He was trying to build a wall. You know, he did things. And then Biden came in and and Biden executive ordered us into, you know, oblivion from an immigration standpoint. And so while I do understand that there's some people that might be like, well, you shouted the guy down. I don't really think I shouted the guy down. I was up against the clock, so I had to take a break. But I, I guess the question is, how much time do I really want to dedicate a program to somebody who clearly is either oblivious or is willfully ignorant or trying to troll the host. I mean, do do you know what I mean? I mean, I want to have serious dialogue and, and I do feel like I've had over the, I've been doing this for Eric and Gary filling in, had the honor of doing this for several years now. And I've had some mind blowingly great conversations with some of you folks. And, and it's, You know, if I retire tomorrow, it's um, be one of the best experiences I've ever had is is hosting uh, Red Eye Radio for Eric and Gary because of the conversations that I have with you folks. But I guess it's every it's every talk show host conundrum, perhaps it's not mine any longer, but I'm not going to spend any time trying to engage in a conversation with somebody who is, again, either willfully ignorant or simply trying to troll the host. To me, it's just not worth it. I'd rather sit back and, you know, tell stories and and talk to people who are reasonable. Yes, even if somebody calls up who is reasonable and disagrees with me. Guy called up last night. Same time, actually. And he was, you know, arguing with me about some things and he and he said some stuff uh, last night, if if you missed it, he basically said the same kind of leftist talking points. And, you know, one of the things that, that he had mentioned was this Project 2025 that the Democrats keep saying, well, Project 2025, that's a Donald Trump thing. And, you know, they, they make it seem like this is Donald Trump's playbook. And there's some stuff in there apparently that is abhorrent. There's probably some stuff in there that I, I like being a, a very conservative person. But apparently there are some other things that are not so good. But Donald Trump himself has even said that Project 2025, that does not reflect where he's at. Donald Trump is embracing is embracing agenda 47. That's his agenda. And so when when somebody comes at me with something so absolutely ridiculous. As Donald Trump is embracing, you know, this uh, project 2025, when the vast majority of you folks listening know that project 2025 is not something that Donald Trump has embraced. As a matter of fact, he has openly said no. That is not what I'm embracing. I am embracing and I stand for uh, agenda 47. So to me, it's like, how much time do I really want to spend speaking to somebody like that? Because I'm not going to convince them and they're not going to convince me. And I could do, you know, go back to talk radio in the 1980s and just start yelling at people. But I'm not going to do that. I don't like to do that. My voice goes up like nine octaves and it's not pleasant to listen to. Speaking of which. So if you have a listening device that starts with an A. I have to tell you that I'm going to have to mention the name and she might go off. So I'm going to give you three seconds to turn it off or walk out of the room. Because we're going to be talking about a big controversy regarding Alexa. Now, this is fascinating because this was last night and just the Internet went on fire with this. So a guy speaks into Alexa And he is apparently asking for political advice. And he did ask Alexa about Kamala Harris. Alexa, why should I vote for Kamala Harris? Well, there are many reasons to vote for Kamala Harris. The most significant may be that she is a female African-American from a humble background who has risen to the highest ranks of American law enforcement and government, representing the best qualities of the American dream. Wow. I mean, boy, that's right off of a press release, right? 
So the same guy then asks Alexa about voting for Donald Trump. Alexa, why should I vote for Donald Trump? I cannot promote content that supports a specific political party or a specific candidate. So just to make sure that everybody's clear, she can extol the virtues of Kamala Harris, but not for Donald Trump. Amazing. And so I'm going to tell you that I really wasn't sure that this was a thing. And so I went downstairs and I started, you know, speaking into my own Alexa. And sure enough, my Alexa did not do that. The reason why is because they very quickly fixed the problem. Headline from the Daily Mail, Amazon fixes Alexa error, and they have the word error in like quotation marks, after devices gave biased answers about Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Now, if you want to see what this is all about, find me on on Twitter, find me on X at Dan Manda Show. I wasn't sure if this was real. I wasn't sure if this was fake news. But apparently this was a real thing and Amazon had to go and fix the air. In a series of videos posted on X on Tuesday, Alexa users are seen asking why they should vote for Donald Trump. Each time the AI device replied, I cannot provide content that promotes a specific political party or a specific candidate. As I just played for you, very different story when it was asking about Donald Trump. And I just, I I do wonder, how does that even happen? And do you really believe that it was an accident? Inquiring minds want to know. Because it seems like an awfully convenient accident, especially when it favors Kamala Harris, who, of course, you know, everybody on the left obviously loves. 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number. Let's say hello to uh, Carrie in Jacksonville, Florida on Red Eye Radio. Hey, Carrie. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm great. I just wanted to comment on your story about uh, Kamala Harris talking about the 19 to 24 year olds being stupid. Yes. And that they don't know what they're doing. One thing that keeps getting left out is Walt, I'm from Minnesota originally. I live in Jacksonville, Florida now. But he said when the George Floyd riots were going on, that the he didn't call in the National Guard because they were 19-year-old cooks and he couldn't trust them to stand up to the George Floyd rioters. I remember and that. It just seems to have gotten lost. You know what? I'll bring that uh, audio bite to the program tomorrow night because you're right. That That is a great example about how not only Tim Waltz but also Kamala Harris have – come out against the the very age group that they're trying to get to vote for them. So, Carrie, that's a great. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Let me. Hey, Carrie, let me ask you. So you're you're like, from. Hey, look, real quick. You're from Minnesota, right? Did you live in Minnesota during the uh, Tim Waltz days? No, I, I I've lived here in Jacksonville now for 25 years. So, nope. OK. I used to live in Minnesota when it was a nice place. <laughs> 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 my 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 friends who uh, used to live in Min- Minnesota all do say the same thing. It used to be a really nice place, and I appreciate the call. Uh, let's say hello to Ken, who is listening in Fargo, North Dakota. Ken, I'm sure you're listening. You're uh, you're looking forward to a winter time in Fargo, aren't you? That's right. Forty below zero. Electric mm. vehicles don't work too good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, along with. Uh, fracking, uh, Trump needs to bring up pipelines and remind Americans of all the union jobs and uh, that Biden-Harris canceled on day one uh, mm-hmm. and get that back on the topic. Yeah, he, he does. And I'm not sure. Well, he, he has said the president, although I don't think he specifically talked about the Keystone Pipeline, um, he has said that he wants to drill, baby, drill he wants to do all of those things. But if he really does, wants to get very specific, uh, I agree with you. That is what he should uh, do. And I think that that is for Joe Biden. That was emblematic of his presidency. You know, he came in and he did a few things right away. Number one is he started attacking Joe Biden's. Uh, he started attacking Donald Trump's border. Joe Biden did. 
that was uh, one of the first things that he did. And he also, again, canceled that Keystone Pipeline. He started going after a domestic oil production. And that was, again, emblematic as far as, you know, that's the funny thing, too. He talks about how he's the the most pro-union president uh, in history. You know how many union jobs he destroyed with that that one executive order? I mean, thousands. And yet people, yeah. again, they'll just they'll believe him. Uh, go ahead. I'll give you the last uh, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, no, I uh, without pipelines. And, and I the other thing is I used to work uh, my first job. I was a telegrapher for Burlington Northern uh, Railway. And uh, Warren Buffett owns 100 percent of Burlington Northern Santa Fe. And with when the pipelines are shut down, guess who uh, wins by hauling uh, oil through all of his uh, trains? It's Warren Buffett. What a quinky dink. All right. Thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it. And uh, let's say hello very quickly to this is I'm trying to get through some of these calls. Ken is calling from Chicago on Red Eye Radio. Hey, Ken, how are you? I'm sorry. This is Joe. Joe in Chicago. Go ahead. Hey, Dan, good morning. Uh, I wanted to ask, I need some help understanding on what the seemingly installation of Kamala Harris as the presidential nominee after receiving absolutely zero primary votes as constitutional and how it seems, especially where I'm from, um, some voters are so naive to see that this is the most radical, just ditch effort from Democrats to remain in power given Kamala's most recent like policy hypocrisies regarding border control, fracking, union uh stances thanks for taking the call all right uh thank you very much joe i appreciate it well first of all as far as i can tell uh i have not seen the usual suspects scream screaming that this is unconstitutional basically you had joe biden who won the primary now it was a crooked primary because as most you folks probably know they wouldn't allow the democrats wouldn't allow rfk jr to run in the primary. As a matter of fact, they really wouldn't let anybody uh, run in the primary that was a good candidate against Joe Biden. So Biden, of course, breezes through the primary. Then he decides, well, he it was decided for him that he was going to step aside. And since Kamala was the running mate, she was able to just slide right in there and get the hundreds of millions of dollars in uh, campaign donations. So there you go. Appreciate the call. 866-90-RED-EYE. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. Red Eye Radio, 866-90-RED-EYE is the phone number. Dan Mandis in for Gary and Eric. Follow me on X, if you would, at Dan Mandis Show. Uh, People chiming in. You can always find me, again, on Twitter or X. People sending me private messages there. You can also find me on uh, Facebook at Dan Mandis Show. And people are are talking about um, the story that I just did about Alexa and how Alexa was saying, well, people were asking, why should I vote for Donald Trump? And Alexa was saying, well, we can't really give out political advice, but then asked about Kamala Harris. And old Alexa goes on a 60 second soliloquy about how great Kamala Harris is. The uh, folks at Alexa say that they have fixed the problem. We'll see. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.